Well, tonight we're talking about a topic that uh, there's a good chance it might have a much larger impact than you might first think when you first hear the topic of youth employment. Uh, we're going to talk about the larger societal issues, the personal impact of this topic, and what's being done about it here in St. Louis. Joining us to get it all started is Bill Emmons with the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. And Bill, I've been struck as we've prepared for this show what a global issue this is, how countries poor and wealthy grapple with this very differently. But let's focus on your area of expertise and on what we're all uh, immediately concerned about here, and that is the St. Louis region. What impact does youth employment have on our region? Well, as a direct impact, it's not large because we're talking about a relatively small uh, sector of the, the entire labor market. In terms of dollars and In cents. terms of the number of people or the, the actual contributions maybe to a specific employer. But it's really the beginning of a career track, and it's, it's building the skills early, and there's a lot of evidence that suggests that early career development, where uh, your first job, your employer, uh, that has a big impact on how an individual progresses and, of course, the kinds of contributions that they can make to the, to the company, to the employer, and to the economy broadly. So it, it is very important in part because it's the beginning of a process. So the economy we live in today owes at least some to the youth and how, and how they were employed 20 years ago, 30 years ago? Yes, for sure. And it's not just the education, the skills that you bring in to the, to the workplace, but how you can combine that then with that first job, uh, early experience. Are our young people working in St. Louis? Yes, I mean, we are, I think we need to say that uh, this is not as strong an economy as we thought maybe 10 years ago was normal, but I think uh, we actually do have a fairly uh, good job market right now, uh, both at the national level and in St. Louis. We are fully participating in this recovery. Our unemployment rate's about five and a half percent now. That's again, both national and in the St. Louis area. We have job growth. I'm talking about the overall, overall job market. Yeah. Uh, job growth is uh, faster than our population growth, faster than our labor force growth. So this is exactly what, what the Fed is trying to achieve, is a prolonged period of strong growth and employment. That's the backdrop because often youth employment is going to be uh, dependent on how strong the economy is and, uh, you know, stands to reason. when. Uh, employers are struggling, as they were during the recession. Of course, they're not going to be as eager to uh, bring on younger workers. And so as the, uh, the job market recovers more broadly, uh, that's going to be probably the most important thing in terms of creating more opportunities. Of course, in that weaker economy, they're competing with people with more experience willing to work for right. less. And that you, you touch on a couple of issues. Of course, what is different about the uh, one of the things different about the uh, the youth job market is exactly as you say. There's sort of this downward pressure sometimes from people with a little more experience, maybe even with a little more uh, skills, which makes it difficult in a weak economy uh, to, to get started. And so this, uh, this recession, like all recessions, but especially because it was so severe, had disproportionately strong effects on young people. Is there concern when a young person is not only not working, but not learning? Right, not going to trade school, not going to the university. Is there is is, is that have a, a even worse trajectory for the future? Absolutely. That's in fact that's a special area of uh, of focus, both for researchers, policymakers, people uh, touching these these uh, young people. The the risk is that a young person becomes detached from the labor market, uh, and that we know from experience. Uh, can easily make that person less employable. Even if they might have had skills at a given point in time, if they are detached from the labor market, uh, there does appear to be some, uh, some lasting damage. So that, that there is a, a critical time element. And again, that's why this long recession and relatively slow, relatively weak recovery uh, has been something that we're very concerned about for young people. If a young person has uh, finished high school, can't find a job, I uh, can't quite figure out if they feel like going to college. They're just kind of thinking, you know, tomorrow. There's some evidence that suggests that's a, that, that delay into the, in the job, into the job market, into the job, uh, right. in, into, in, into an employment has lasting effects. Is that, yes. is that right? That is right. Of course, I think you were kind of uh, mentioning too that in a weak economy, it is the case that some young people will in, uh, go to school. So, uh, you know, 
to some extent kind of waiting out the recession. Of course, this was such a long recession and weak recovery that that's been difficult. Uh, but it, it, you know, it, it makes sense for the individual to, uh, to upskill a little bit, to wait and hope that the job market turns relatively quickly. Uh, and that, you know, so that, that is a, a positive response if that individual uh, you know, can identify uh, a useful uh, a bit of further training. Do employers invest in young people the way they used to in terms of training? Uh, I would say probably not as much, but that's, it's not unique to young people. I think that's a real issue across the board, that uh, with more mobility, uh, and I'm talking about workers of all ages, with more mobility across jobs, there is a little bit less incentive for employers to invest in specific people. I mean, in some cases, maybe that, uh, it would make sense, but it, it's a broad statement. I think there is less incentive in a more mobile job market. So it sort of cuts both ways. Having the option to move, of course, is a good thing for, uh, for a, an employee. But if that relationship, you know, we used to think about sort of lifetime employment. Mm -hmm. Well, if, if it was a reasonable expectation that you'd be with this company for 20 years, the employer maybe would be more willing to make that longer term investment. So that, I mean, that, that is an issue that uh, you know, as I say, it cuts both ways. They would be more willing to invest the first couple of years for or whatever time it might be if they knew you were going to stay. Right. Um, what do you hear from regional leaders, from employers, big or small, about the preparedness of our young people when they try to hire them? Well, I think that you know depends on exactly what uh, what employer, what what uh, skill uh, or job type, and you know this. The lament is that we don't have enough uh, maybe people prepared for this for the right you know say high-tech jobs or, or particularly skilled. Um, I am a little bit skeptical, I mean, going back to your earlier point, I mean, a lot of uh, times there might be a, a young person who doesn't come to you with those skills, but maybe that is something that can be developed. And as I say, that we would love to see more of that commitment, a two-sided commitment, but you know, it, it would potentially take away some flexibility from the employee also to have to commit to a longer-term uh, relationship. What, what do you tell people uh, is the why as to why they should care about whether or not a young person is employed? Well, I think, you know, there's, there's obviously everybody knows a young person, uh, so there is that, uh, you know, the sense in which your own network, your family, your friends, your community uh, wants to see people usefully employed. Uh, there's the development, you know, sort of the long term as we age and we ourselves leave the job market, we are of course dependent on those who are continuing to work and so we want people who have the skills and the engagement, the, the commitment uh, to work. And on the downside, uh, the earlier point we were talking about, young people who become disengaged from the labor force not only miss the opportunity to earn money, to make a contribution to their co uh, company, or their, their employer and the community, but there are also of course social issues associated with that. It's no secret that uh, unemployment, uh, low or no opportunity, is sort of the breeding ground for all sorts of dysfunction for individuals, for communities. And so it's almost, uh, you know, sort of a, a uh, defensive uh, interest also that we don't want to have a large number of disengaged young people or people who maybe are in, in work but see it as a dead end. You know, they don't see any mobility, any opportunity for advancement. So in that sense, I mean, we are all connected in that way, and we, we all have a stake in trying to get the maximum number of young people productively engaged, getting their careers off the ground.